Hello and welcome to episode 19 of Willing Sacrifice. Wow. What? 19 I didn't realize we were up to 19. 19, yes. It's, it's been a while. It, it has been a little while since we've done one. What? Maybe three, four weeks? Uh, but we're back. We're back for another episode. Uh, it, it's pretty awesome. Uh, we've actually decided to pivot a little bit and. I'm kidding. And switch to uh, some new boxes. Um, we just found after a while, like the ones that we were uh, doing were like a little bit um, repetitive. They they just got stale. I get it. Well, I get like it, no pun know. intended. The snacks got a little stale. People maybe don't get them for as long as we got them. So you know, three or four months, and you know you've seen enough, and you cancel your subscription. But uh, right, we kind of kept our subscription for longer and ended up seeing repeats or you know um, things like that. And I mean, it, it's okay. I mean, so we we did switch to uh, a new one. Uh, Munch Pack was one that we were doing, and we had no issues with the, what they gave. Uh, a lot of the stuff was really good. It just got kind of after a while. It was kind of like oh, the same old stuff. You these know, gummies again, or yeah. oh, these chips again. Or... Yeah, and then um, the other thing was is we were doing uh, Tokyo Treat, and that one was also very like just kept. We kept getting those uh, the corn snacks, the the sticks. The Umaibo. Umaibos and the uh <laughs> those uh those curry ones too. Those little oh the little uh, yeah. the turtle snacks. Yeah, yeah. We kept getting those right. over and over again, it seemed. So And you know, maybe they were a different flavor. Like the Umaibo right. were I mean, granted there was one in every box and but they were different flavors, but you kind of yeah. knew that you were gonna get a subpar snack. None of them were ever wow. Yeah. And the turtle snacks were always kind of the oh, same, these! You know, yeah, uh, yeah. So crunchy. yeah, so we we got we we decided to stop. I was get rid of. We decided to <laughs> yes, we decided to stop subscribing to those two. And um, so we have a couple of boxes from uh, one of the new ones that we decided to subscribe to, and uh, we're waiting for one of our co-hosts, uh, Sarah, to. Uh, she has a couple boxes left, I think, coming for Tokyo Tree. Awesome. And, and then when we when she finishes up with those, we're gonna subscribe to another uh, Japanese one, which we think might have some different stuff to it. So yeah, I think I'm excited because I think you kind of you get a tea, which I know you're not a big tea person, but I'm huge right. on tea. I love all kinds of tea, um, so I'll be able to brew some tea. And I think in some boxes you get um, like ramen or soup. Yeah. Um, so there's a few little differences. It's not all just snack food or right. just candy. Yeah. Um, so I'm kind of really looking forward to that. The name of it is uh, Baksu. Yeah, Baksu. And I think even like if you're if you're like a fan of Mikey Chen, he even has like a uh, discount. I think it's a ten percent off or something like uh, uh, each box. So you can get a nice little you know a couple dollars off of it. Mm -hmm. uh, so the one the one that we're doing tonight that we're we just subscribed to, uh, but we have couple of boxes in backlog um you took a break yeah yeah <laughs> well i mean we didn't so much take a break as we just hadn't gotten to these ones yet which is a bad problem to have right no. you know, oh my god uh, too many snacks yes um so we went with universal yums uh which uh i know my sister um has subscribed to them in the past and has raved about them so we figured we'd give it a try. And their boxes are fairly affordable, you know? I think I did, like, a subscription, like, a six-month or something like that. And uh, so far, we haven't looked at it yet, but the packaging and everything is pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, you get, like, a book, like, with all the all the snacks in it, which is so cute and everything, the graphics and everything. I don't know if you saw this. And then there's, like, there's like information about turkey and... There's trivia in here. You could really make like a whole like event out of even before you get to the snacks. There's all of this, you know, fun trivia. Yeah, we'll have to uh, we'll have to ask each other some trivia questions. Do you want to do it in the course of the show? Yeah. Or, okay, we can. I'm, see how smart I am. Well, you are pretty smart. <laughs> and also, uh, our friends Maggie and Rob, her husband Rob, 
also get Universal Youngs, and I know sometimes they post live uh, when they go through theirs. Mm -hmm. And if you want to check out their reviews, and hopefully maybe at some point we'll sync up and we'll be able to have them on. Well, we'll be able to have a Universal Yum Off. I thought, I'm doing this on the fly. We always do it on the fly. This isn't scripted. Hmm. Oh, maybe a little bit. Oh. Um, but anyway, um, so why, yeah, why don't I? Uh, why don't I read the first one for you? Trivia box? Yeah. Sure. A public library in Ankara exclusively features A, books picked from the trash, B, books with red covers, C, centuries-old cookbooks, or D, books written by local high schoolers? Hmm. I don't know. This is obviously going to be a guess. But uh, I will say... Centuries-old cookbooks. Oh, you're incorrect, actually. <laughs> um, it's actually books picked from the trash. Wow. Yeah. So when Nobody group, should ever throw out books. No, that's horrible. I mean, I unless mean, they're damaged. Right, right. Moldy, yeah. wet, gross, infested yes. grossness. Well, when a group of sanitation workers in Ankara noticed folks discarding usable books, usable books, right. they cleaned them Save them and use them to open an entire library in a former brick factory. It was originally meant just for the sanitation department, but when locals caught word or caught wind, they wanted in. The library is now open to the public and has over 25,000 books. That's awesome. Yeah. What Much like tea, I love books. You do. <laughs> Sometimes they go hand in hand. Yeah. Tea and books, yes. Oh my gosh, it just there's so much in this little book, so much information. Yes, it's very cool. Oh, and each snack has a lot of a big blurb. It, they do. I like it, this. I'm, I'm, I'm information. I mean, is this telling me to start? Oh wait, is it telling me to start with this one? You think? It's pointing to that one. Okay. Here's a little. Uh, yeah. What does that say? It's uh, allergy information. Oh, okay. Well, that's good. That's also very good because there were times in our other boxes where I had to really kind of, we had to make sure for either me or for Brother Sean, um, certain food allergies. Oh, one of the other cool things that came with it is a little uh, rating sheet. Yeah. So if, you know, you go through and you talk, we do trivia, you might forget. Oh, should we actually do them like in the numbers on this? Like, is that the intent? Well, doesn't it say to start with this one? I mean, it, it starts with this one, but, I mean, do we do then this one and then this one? Or do we just do whatever order we want to? Let's do this one and this. Let's do them in this order because they're kind of in that order. Okay. So the first thing that we have we is... We didn't plan this. It's not obviously. So. Well, but, I mean, we're exploring this book and we're, we're kind of getting a lay of the land here. So maybe by the time we get to the second box, we'll be in good shape. Right? Maybe. So we have, um, I think we've seen this brand before, but um, they're Baharat Spice Cracker Chips. Um, oh my gosh, yeah, this is a lot of words. Um, seasoned with Turkey's famous spice blend. Do you love plain, boring snacks? If so, well, you're <laughs> going to seriously hate these cracker <laughs> chips and the rest of the box for that matter. Oh boy. Mm. Every cranny. Cranny? No, no, no word about nooks, but just crannies. Just crannies. Of these ridged rounds is packed with bahara. I, I I am sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. Yeah, I mean, do you know that word? No, bahara. Bahara. That's what we'll go with. A blend of spices that's insanely popular all over the Middle East and especially Turkey. In fact, you'll hear locals describe spicy hot food by saying. Bahra, which means seasoned with spices. Like many traditional spices with multicultural roots, baharat ingredients differ from place to place. Turkish baharat usually contains some mix of onion powder, parsley, garlic, oregano. thyme, and paprika. It smells like oregano. It's mixed into condiments, incorporated into hundreds of meat and 
veggie recipes and served atop, atop tables as a way to take any dish from meh to mmm in mm. seconds. And of course, it's also used on snacks. Our favorite. These much loved cracker chip hybrids, hybrids. Take a bite and you'll see why they're so beloved and successfully kick this anything but boring Turkish adventure into high gear. So we're not usually, we're not used to seeing um, crackers in ch in bags like this, really. I mean, they're mostly potato. Uh, some of the, well, some of the like boxes we've gotten previously have had bags like that with chips in them. Mm -hmm. Now these are crackers. There's no potato. It's 100% wheat crackers. Mmm. Those are good. A I little love, salty. I love the flavor. They're, I mean, they're very well seasoned. They're delicious. Um, mm. I'm surprised that, 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 that there's no cheese in them. I look at the ingredients. No cheese. Because they're almost like a cheese cracker, but really flavorful, really yummy. Good start. I agree. So, is this uh, our uh, our cheat sheet for grading? Our yum scoreboard gives us three options to rate something: smiley face, meh, and mm. but. The question is, is I mean, you have thirteen snacks on this. Uh huh. If you want like a like a, a like a grade, like you know, like that's like a number. You know what I'm saying? Like, or you just count the smiley faces. Okay. That would be the first. Well, know. I mean, like, but then there's like first place, second place, third place. You know what I'm saying? Like, how do you how do you differ between all the different smiley faces? Hmm. You get what I'm saying? Like you, you might. Yeah. We might need to think about this. So maybe we do on a, a scale of one to five. Okay. So. And like, let's just do uh, like, um, let's not do like half numbers or yeah. four. Like we're not star search over here. <laughs> um, so um, so for me this is you know to begin with it's a smiley face. Oh yeah. Definitely. I liked it, and. Uh, I'd give it a four. How about you? I'd go three and three quarters there. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, I would also go a four. A great, great kickoff to this box. Yeah, really. Really turkey. Yeah. Don't make me sad for saying that. Yeah, we got our water. Because I think the only thing that keep, kept that from being a five is that it was very salty. Okay, so I got to go to this next one. This one I think is going to be more sweet than anything. The vanilla tahini halva. Oh, that's not it. But that's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> He's just digging through the box now. Oh, no, I'm trying to find this. So this is tahini halva. Vanilla tahini halva. So. Heavy. Turkey's crumbly sesame sugar tradition. In Turkey, it doesn't get more iconic than hava or halva. The extraordinarily crumbly ground sesame confection locals have been loving since the 11th century. A famous enthusiast was Suleiman the Magnificent, the Ottoman Empire's longest reigning sultan. He built a special kitchen next, next to his palace called the uh, Helva. Halvahan, or House of Halva, where at least 30 versions of Halva were produced, including the tahini version in your box. It turned out to not only be the Sultan's favorite, but the favorite of the entire empire. And just maybe it'll be your favorite from the box. This sounds interesting. Sounds You're having some uh, difficulty opening this thing. Mm -hmm. Well, it said crumbly, so I'm trying to not have it end up Crumbled all over the Crumbled floor. Crumbled all over the floor. So, yeah, it's a good idea to you know, push it off. Break me off a piece of that halva. It's very bland looking. It looks just yeah. like a chunk of dough. Yeah, it, this is this is interesting. I mean, this is 
And it just likes it looks like a chunk of dough. It smells good. Mm, it smells nutty. So yeah. sesame? Oh no, that's the yeah, tea. Sesame. Yeah. yeah. Mm. It's thick. She's thick. <laughs> That's a gummy snack. That's almost like mm. like a peanut butter fudge bar in a way. No. It's like like a better nutter butter or a, a better butterfinger. Like the inside of a butterfinger. Kind of, yeah. Without being overly sweet. Yep. Or crunchy. And not as like um how the how like the sugar will almost stick, or like the sugary candy will stick to like your teeth. It doesn't do that either. That's okay, yummy. I mean, I can see why this has stuck around. Mm. I'm kind of hard pressed to find anything wrong with that, aside from maybe the color. Visually, it's not appealing. I'd go with a four on that one. Yeah, me too. Texturally, it's a little weird, but it, it, it's tasty. And it does stick in your teeth a little. Not as bad as a Butterfinger bar. And again, it's less sweet. Right. And it's softer. And obviously sesame instead of peanut. So completely different. I like that <laughs> aspect though. The sesame kind of gives it like this whole different like um toasty flavor. Yeah, yeah. It, it kind of takes it to like a different level. Like it's 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 kind of got the like essence of a butterfinger, but then that like that sesame kind of just takes over and it's the butterfingers. Uh, Older, much more um, sophisticated. sophisticated sibling. Yeah, yeah I like that. That's, that's <laughs> and it, obviously it's not chocolate covered either, so that helps it not be sickeningly sweet. Right. I would definitely like if you know if I was in, we were in Turkey and that was in a vending machine and we needed a snack, that would be a go-to. It would be a good like like between meal kind of snack because if it's got almost like that heaviness too, like a uh, like a Cliff Bar kind of heaviness. Yeah, it is definitely heavy. All right, so this is another um, one under this Turkish <clears throat> icons uh, section. It's cocoa cream mosaic cookies. Um, so I think one of the things that we um, we kind of run into sometimes with cookies from other countries is they can be a little odd to or us. Dry. Yeah. So these are featuring Turkish tahini, which the previous thing had tahini, mm, um, hazelnut, and cocoa. So I'm all about those three things. So hopefully I'm all about these cookies. I think what we've experienced in the past as far as cookies from other countries is, number one, they're very crispy, dry, crunchy biscuit type things. And uh, a lot of times the chocolate... We're so, as, as Americans, we're so used to like chocolate bombs in our cookies. Everything is so chocolatey that a lot of times they're, they seem right. like less chocolate. Yeah. So, um, but this also has that hazelnut looks like filling. Yeah. I'm excited about that. So, um, huh? I said so young. Yes. Take a bite of this cookie. <laughs> You'll taste a rich, smooth cocoa filling. Unlike any you've ever had before, man, that's um, that's, that's pretty a, lofty goals. Like there. Four, Forty-six years, and I haven't ever tasted anything like this ever. Wow! And there are a few reasons for that. Oh, they give you some reasons. <laughs> Tahini, a traditional Turkish paste of ground sesame seeds, adds a touch of earthiness and that creamy nuttiness. They're so cute. Oh, and that creamy. Creamy nuttiness, that's hazelnut, of which Turkey is the world's number one producer. The country accounts for 75% of the global supply. <laughs> 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 They're cute. They're little, like, 
psychedelic eye. Mix these two Turkish specialties into rich chocolatey goodness, and you've got the you've got one extraordinary cookie or four actually. Yeah, there's four in the package, and I got fifty. Nice. Well, see, that's what happens when you play with your food. Worth it. <laughs> They're so cute. They look like um, there were those lifesavers that were like cream and whatever. The cream savers. Yeah. Yeah. They were decorated like that a little bit. They smell kind of just bland cookie. I smell the I smell the um, almost like the the sesame is giving off that like that and the hazelnut giving off that nuttiness. Mm hmm. There's like whole chunks of hazelnuts in there. They're crunchy. Yeah. Um. Dry. A little bit dry. The flavors are good. I like the flavors. Um. You can eat it with coffee or tea. Yep. This is not a. For me, it's not a um, snack on the go. Well, unless you have like your morning coffee with you. Right. It's tasty. I mean, they're tasty. Don't get me wrong, but a little too dry. And again, that, that's a, I have to imagine it's an American thing that our cookies, we like ours moist or chewy or soft and the rest sure. of the world likes them to snap. Yep. I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna go with a three on that one. So is it a smiley face? Delicious, excellent, or meh? Okay. Meh. Okay. I mean, three out of five. That's like right in the middle, you know. I am also a three. Like I said, they're not. I'm. I don't dislike them, but they they have a time and a place. I think, and that time and a place is. Coffee, tea, you know, to go on the side of that, not by itself with your lunch as like your lunch dessert. Keep right. A little too dry. So this next section is kind of interesting. It's titled Savor the Sights. And this snack, when I opened this box up, it really intrigued me of what this could be or what these are what these are gonna taste like. They're um Salted roasted chickpeas. Mm, I've had those. Auto nuts. Salted roasted chickpeas. Um, turkey's flavorful, guilt free obsession. You can't walk down a Turkish street without seeing bags of the lebi or lebibi. Roasted <laughs> chickpeas. The lebi. Lebibi. <laughs> The bleeby. The bleeby. Maybe. <laughs> Bleebies. <laughs> uh, they're hanging from stall roofs, roasted in a special oven to make them non-greasy, soft, and creamy. These chickpeas are ab absurdly popular. The only difficulty is Open choosing that. what flavor to savor. Some are hot and spicy. Another type is seasoned with dried cloves, and others are slathered in sugar but sometimes simple is best as the salty nuttiness of these downright addictive le bleed -ble will prove i couldn't get them open do you want me to uh yeah um so mom my grandmother used to get these uh at the uh italian import store uh and they would eat my dad and her and my grandfather would eat them all the time as a little kid, I really didn't like them because I thought they were um, weird. So they had a weird, not texture, they were just crunchy, uh, but a weird flavor. And because, you know, I, I go in thinking, oh, it's going to be like a peanut or because um, that's what they kind of look like, uh, a peanut. But maybe as an adult, I will like them better. Or maybe I will like the Turkish version of them better than the Italian version of them. Or Mike will explode the bag all over the floor and we won't have any. Or Mike will open or them. Or Mark will open them. So Achievement unlocked. Auto nuts. Yeah, auto nuts. Yeah, they smell about the same. This doesn't bode well. Come on, adult pellet. 
<laughs> Don't fail me now. <laughs> because as a kid, I didn't like these. Nope. I don't like them. Or like powdery. Yeah. Nope. I haven't grown into that taste. I am disappointed. Blech. Uh, that's a, a frowny face for me. Uh, I did it's not funny. need these in my life. <laughs> I've had them before. It's funny. I, um, like, you'll often, like, when we have salads at home, right? Mm -hmm. You'll buy, you'll you'll have me get, like, uh, canned chickpeas, yep. and we'll put them over a salad, and they're kind of, they're, they're kind of wet, but they're kind of, like, cold, mm. full, but they're also smushy in a sense. Mm -hmm. they're, I love yeah. garbanzo beans or chickpeas or whatever you want to call them when they're cooked. These are so odd because Ugh. they they initially start out like dry, but then when you bite into them, they basically do the same thing as the chickpeas out of the like that we have on the salads mm -hmm. do in a way. They just kind of like smush away. <laughs> well, those get powder. It's like they're like a powdery. Smush, right, right. Where the ones like you put on the salad are just a beany squish. They're like a bean. They're for lack I of don't, a better word, moist. I mean, metal. I don't mind them I don't horribly. Know. I mean, I'll probably snack on these. I really you. Um, mm -hmm. but they're by. I mean, they, they're they're a little bit nutty, almost peanutty in a way. But I would do um probably like a two. Meh or frowny face. It's probably meh for me, but like a two. Like I, I'm, I'm trying to think of like, as we're going through this box, like how I'm reading the other things, so I get kind of like a scale. <clears throat> Mine, uh, I gave it a frowny face and a one, uh, just because I knew what they were going in, and I had hoped that either the Turkish version was better, or my palate had improved in twenty eight or nine years, uh, but no. I still think they're gross. I still think they're weird textured. They're not crunchy. They poof into powder and then mush in your mouth. Uh, and they're not flavorful. Uh, they're, they're, they're just gross. They're packing peanuts would be better. Tell us how you really feel about them. Blah! Okay. I feel blah. All right. Well, maybe maybe we can be redeemed by this. I think we should do trivia before we go further. We've got a lot of trivia. Okay. So I need to ask you? Yeah, go ahead. All right, trivia question number two. The Zverbi neighbor neighborhood in Istanbul is known for A, a highway with a speed limit of 120, B, an internet famous cat, C, a squirrel sanctuary, or D, a museum of miniatures. Hmm. These are all really good choices. I am going to go with um, a museum of miniatures. And you would be wrong. Oh. Uh, in a city crawling with cats, the most famous is no doubt Tombili, a chubby white-bellied street feline known for her friendliness to strangers. Her unique way of slouching against the steps and her internet fame in 2012. As Istanbul has a long history of affection for cats dating back to the 15th century Ottomans, it's no surprise that the district installed a sculpture of her reclining against the sidewalk steps. So, an internet famous cat. Right on. <clears throat> so, now we go to our. Ooh. Yes. <laughs> uh, that's why I said maybe we'll be redeemed by this. This is a coconut and coffee snowball cake speckled with Turkey's famous coffee beans. Now, I mean, I don't know a lot about Turkey, but I know coffee is like, Turkish coffee is a big thing there, right? So uh, it's a, they also have their own special method, kind of like not just Turkey, but that region, uh, the Baltic region, has their own special way of making coffee, um, and uh, and they they read coffee grounds from Turkish coffee like other countries read tea leaves for fortunes. Nice. 
So I have high hopes for this thing. And hopefully they don't go off in smoke. Um, Today! Look, <laughs> look into the bottom of a... Oh, here you go. Look into the bottom of a Turkish coffee cup and you'll see something unusual. Tons of powdered beans. Turkish, co Turkish coffee is made with unfiltered coffee beans, which are ground to a fine powder and simmered mm -hmm. with sugar water in a long handle, uh, long handle pot called a, can't read that, Cezvez, it's C-E-Z-V-E. -E. The result, a supremely thick, rich, and aromatic coffee. That's like this yum, just as the coffee beans made Turkish coffee special. So too do real coffee flakes made uh, make this white chocolatey coconut cake supremely rich and decadent. Oh, it does smell good. <laughs> it's very soft. It's fishy. Mm. Is that good? Yep. It's like it's a coffee snowball. Hmm. <laughs> Take a really good hostess snowball, chocolate, coconut, and coffee. It's delicious. Oh, just like our wedding. I didn't even smush it into your face. No, nope, you didn't. Mm. It's a happy face. Because that is um, exactly what I would need to do on Facebook Live, right? Uh, yeah. Um, I'm a five on that. Really? Mm -hmm. I love that. I love the coffee on it. I think the only I thing it. I didn't like is the filling, the whipped cream. Hmm. It was greasy, but I, you expect that from, you know, mass-produced snack cakes. It's not going to be whipped cream. It's not going to be something fresh. Like, if you could make that cake fresh, like a chocolate cake with a whipped cream filling and the coffee on it, that would be a five. That would be knocking out of the park. I wonder if we know a baker who could do that. Yeah, I wonder if we know a baker who could Frankenstein that snack cake into a legitimate mm. cake. <laughs> I don't think she's watching, but... Uh, hmm. Hmm. Mental note. Hashtag Sarah Jones gear. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or, I mean, the other person that could potentially do that that we know who's a baker is our friend Allison. Right. Allison could do it. Uh, also one other person who could probably do it who has made things that taste similar to that only in biscotti form. Oh, your aunt? My aunt. Yeah. Uh, okay, so we, we, <laughs> we gotta we gotta kick into this trivia because we're running out of stuff in this box, right? Uh -oh. So uh y Yanartis a mountain near the town of Sorol has been A, increasing in height every two years, B, shifting due, shifting due to constant earthquakes, C, burning for at least 2,500 years, or D, swarming with mountain lions since 2002. <laughs> swarming with mountain lions. Do mountain lions swarm like bees? I just want to see how you say the name. Oh, wow. There's like letters that I don't even know. Like non English letters. Well, it's like a C, but it's got like a little thing below it. A little tail on the bottom. I was just going with Syrah. I would say earthquakes, whatever the earthquakes one is. Um, You'd be incorrect. I thought they had a lot of earthquakes in Japan. Well, maybe they do, but this, uh, this mountain has actually been. Uh, uh, flaming for 2,500 years. Wow, so Due to permanent gas vents <clears throat> that consist constantly spew methane gas into the air. Stinky. The flames are believed to have inspired the three-headed 
fire breathing chimera mm -hmm. in Homer's The Iliad. Ancient sailors also used them as a landmark for navigation. But nowadays, resting hikers use them to make s'mores. <laughs> and it must stink if it's methane gas. Ugh, that's cow farts. Yeah. Smelly, right. smelly So tears. the next thing we have up are some gummies. Are you sure? Not these gummies. <laughs> these are not the gummies you're looking for. We have some gummies. <laughs> um, these are Turkish sour watermelon gummies. Ooh. Turkey's mouth, m most mouth puckering watermelons. Since 1967, the city of Diyarbakir has hosted Turkey's annual watermelon and culture festival. Why Diyarbakir? Because they wanted me to say that twice. <laughs> well, because it's watermelon are the country's biggest and juiciest. Annual attendees flock there to taste them and to check out sculptures carved out of watermelon. The watermelon wing contest and even the watermelon beauty contest <laughs> cause bias, but we think this yum should win. Oh, cause bias, but we should we think this yum should win. Okay, so I need you. I'm not done yet. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you got to the end of your. Not, <laughs> not only is it succulently sour. These watermelons are just so darn cute. That's it. All right, so I haven't tasted them yet, but I smelled the bag, and my salivary glands went off. It's fucking odd. Right. They're little tiny uh, sour gummies. Oh, they're not sour at all. I'm disappointed. The thing we've run into with these is often, like, when something is said to be sour, like, from another country, a lot of them aren't that sour. No. In one of our last Tokyo Treat boxes. We had something that was really sour. There was, like, a lemon thing that I was too much for me. Lemon gum. Yeah. I mean, this is tasty. I like to eat them. Um, but they just taste like watermelon. They're not sour at all. Those are kind of a meh. I'd probably give them a two. I'm at a two as well. All right. So let's do one more, and then we'll get to the next trivia question. Okay. Um, I'm going to find them. It looks like a twisty tie on the picture here. And then majestic or ma mastic? Mastic. Ooh. Coffees. I wonder if they're in this bag. They could be because it's their shoes. They're, they look like they're small shoes. I bet those and those are. Yeah, oh, same. it says find me in your yum bag. <laughs> there's, I mean, I can't be more juvenile, but there's actually a bag called the yum bag. And then on the book, it says find me in your yum bag. So this must be like things that are. You would normally get in bulk or, you know. They, they've probably taken, like, a big bag of them and separated them out, you know, at the at the Universal Yum's factory. <laughs> it's like a Willy Wonka factory. Just people running out all over the place, little Oompa Loompas. Yeah. So there's your top, Mastic Toffee. There's one for me. Oh, wow. I'm going to have to look this up. Well, taste the rare Turkish phenomena. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Dripping off the trees on the island of Chios, you'll find something fantastic. 
Mastic. Oh, I see what they did there. Fantastic Mastic. Yeah. Well, locals are obsessed with the gummy sap and all of its refreshing piney glory. They put it in everything from liqueurs to foods to cosmetics. Oh. Most of the world doesn't even know it exists. That's because it's harvested almost exclusively on Chios, hence the island's name, Sakira Dasi, Island of Gum. Even though the island is no longer owned by the Turks, claimed, in, claimed it in 1912, the rare flavor remains a local staple. Take a bite and decide how fantastic is Mastic really. Well, it doesn't smell good. I'll tell you that. So we got like a little blue thing. It's a this. little white cube of like sticky. Oh, sorry. Uh. Ugh. Nope. Mm. The reason people around the world don't know about it is because it's awful. I'm glad I did not put the whole thing in my mouth. Oh. Oh, God. I feel like I licked a bottle of pine saw. Oh. It's piney? It's lemony. It's fucking odd. It's terrible. I tried, sorry. I got one F bomb and I just used it. I because I, I try and keep this clean a little bit. It um, smells like trees. It tastes like trees. It's supposed to be toffee. I like it tastes of pine salt floor cleaner. Uh that's a one. <laughs> oh, can I give it a zero? You could. I'm giving it a zero. I spit it out. That tells you something. Yeah. Hmm. Maybe I'll take the rest of those. How many do we got left? <laughs> take those to work. Take them to work. And oh, this is back to go worker. Oh, look, candy. What? Oh, no, I would. I would. I would even bring the book and have them try it. I. Uh, I think you should give one to Sean because Sean is kind of our version of Mikey. How many do we have left here? Too many. I don't know how many we got left. Let's see. We got two. Oh, good. Oh. No. No, 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 no. Oh, no. Oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. No. <laughs> Not good. Mastic, bad. I'm never going to eat a mastic again. Mm. Um. Locals in the village of Kushkoi communicate by A, hissing like snakes, B, using walkie-talkies, C, beating on drums, D, whistling like birds. I'm going to go D, whistling like birds. You would be correct. The other three just sounded so like out there, except for the drums. The walkie-talkies <laughs> was just like... Go to Turkey's northern Pontic Mountains and you'll hear plenty of tweeting. No, not the Twitter kind. For three centuries, locals have used whistling a, whish, a whistling version of Turkish called Kushtili, bird language, to communicate over long distances. Audible up to half a mile away, the whistles are the go-to way to invite neighbors to tea, warn them about wolves, even make wedding announcements. Oh. <laughs> a dog just barked. <laughs> Not a, a dog outside, just barked. <laughs> Are you causing that dog to bark? No, it's just a coincidence. All right. Let's hope we can uh, get the flavor of mastic out of my mouth. Well, you know what they say. Mastic is fantastic. That's lies. <laughs> uh Wildly uh, melon and lime chews. Wildly juicy lime meets sweet, soft melons. Sweet, soft melons. Turks aren't just mad about watermelons. 
They, uh, they love all kinds of melons to the point where every city has its favorite. The honeydew, like cassava melon, is flavored in the city that inspired its name, cassava. <laughs> Meanwhile, <laughs> Abacaja loves the, the speckled alacate melon and Kirkajak can't go without the green spotted Kirkajak melons. <laughs> Jesus. So they all got melons named after themselves. Let's just say that. Your ticket to Turkish melon mania, these mouthwatering chews with their juicy melon inside and zingy lime outside. I smell like Sculpey Clay. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever play with Sculpey Clay? Sure. It's exactly what it smells like. <laughs> Okay. That is like the saddest starburst I've ever had. <laughs> Those taste like melon, a little bit like lime, but I'm almost getting something like butter. Yeah, it's bland. Um, I guess maybe that's the melon. I'd go a two on that. Hmm. It's so it's so so. I mean, they it's ain't not no, awful. They're not mastic toffees by any uh, stretch of the imagination. But what is right? Thankfully, nothing much in this world. Um. Yeah. And they stick in your teeth. Mm -hmm. It's been illegal to blank in Turkey since 1925. Your choices are A, play jump rope. B, eat pork more than once a week. C, wear a fez hat. Or D, drive on the right side of the road. I'm going to go with the Fez. You're correct. Uh, yep, wearing the Fez, the iconic cone-shaped red felt hat has been banned in Turkey since 1925. Why the, why the ban? When Mustaga Kenal... A Turk founded the Turkish Republic in the early 20th century. He sought to reform and replace many of the symbols of the defunct Ottoman Empire. The Fez was one of those symbols. So, like, you always see it, like, stereotypically in movies and whatnot. And Turkey was, like, one of those countries I would always think of, like, when you would see them. So... It's just it's kind totally, of a holdover from, yeah. from a long time ago before Turkey was the republic that it is and it was be, part of the like them in Egypt, I would say. Yeah, the Fez. But, and obviously Doctor was number eleven. Right. Yeah. He wears a Fez. Mm -hmm. His Fez is okay. All right. Except in Turkey. Well, you ready for the next snack? I hope so. Toasted paprika corn nuts. So I'm going to look forward to this one because Hungarian and Turkish paprika uh, are better than the stuff that you think you know uh, that comes in that little McCormick shaker. <laughs> this looks like it could very well be spicy. Sometimes paprika is, but most I mean, of the time it it's says smoked paprika. hot paprika, and it's got like a chili pepper mm -hmm. on, the, on the packaging. Well, paprika is made from peppers. Understood, but I'm just kind of giving the okay. full... Giving the full experience? Yes. Corn nuts tossed in spicy Turkish paprika. These corn nuts take us to the Black Sea coast, a mountainous area in northern Turkey known as corn country. Why? Sorry. <laughs> God. Well, <laughs> you're having trouble opening packages. I am. Why? Well, wheat 
thrives in the rest of the country. It can't grow well in the damp climate and steep rocky coastline. So corn is king. It's eaten in every possible form, from corn soup to corn bread to a breakfast of melted cheese and cornmeal called ma ma mahalama. Oh, and these paprika tossed, perfectly toasted corn nuts, of course. What are you waiting for? For those to open the package. When in corn country, do as the locals do. The uh, cornmeal and cheese just sounds like cheese grits, but it's yum. I can't. I can't even. Well, I didn't want to do that. <laughs> I didn't want to tear it. And I got a nice little spout. Okay, that's good. They look like corn nuts. Well, they're corn nuts. They're good. A little bit of spicy kick. Not too much. A good crunch. It's a good snack. Yeah. Those are yummy. But they're similar to chili ones that I've had. Some of them have better heat than others, like the flavors that much more. Right, but it's not a flavor, it's just a heat. I'm not getting no. like a pepper flavor. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're good. I like them. I like them a three. I'm going to go four. Mm, those are pretty good. I mean, I've had corn nuts before. They're common here. Um, they're definitely got a nice little kick of spice. I didn't get a whole lot of flavor other than salt and spice. And then the corn. Right. Okay, so. Pig box. Yes. You might like these. Date mam mamul cookies. Like a Fig Newton, but with real dates. Yum. During Ed El Fit, the Islamic holiday, Marking the end of the Ramadan fast, the streets of, the streets of Turkey smell like two things, butter and dates. Why? Because everyone is making mamul cookies. Well, mamul can be stuffed with all kinds of nuts and dried fruits. After all, the name means stuffed in Arabic. Dates are the go-to for Eid. Eid, I think it is. These, these yums are so soft, buttery, and gooey. There's no tastier way to celebrate the end of the fast. So they look like Fig Newtons. Um, as a kid, my grandparents used to make Italian fig cookies, um, which were like Fig Newtons. But my grandmother didn't like figs, so she would use all dates. So, and obviously they were delicious. Oh, even when we were together, we first got <laughs> together, she'd make them, and they were freaking amazing um but again they were a kind of a you needed a cup of coffee because they're very rich very dense yep um they smell good they smell just like that and i know what they're called in italian and I, the name is escaping me at the moment for the italian fig cookies um cucci dotti i think about it um which date cookie cucci uh, dotti what? uh cucci cucci not that kind Oh. Um, well, damn it. <laughs> but basically, take a Fig Newton and make it with dates instead of figs. Right. Smells good. Smells like honey. The, um, the cookie part. Again, this is something that would taste better homemade than store-bought. Um, I think a cookie dough, like a butter cookie dough, would be way better than, obviously it's mass produced, so it's dry, 
but the filling is excellent. It's very much dates, honey, a little bit nutty. Um, so probably, again, excellent with a cup of tea. I, I was going to say, I envision you having tea tomorrow and having a <laughs> spot, you know, while you're working. Mm -hmm. So, yum. But if anybody wants to uh, go out on that limb and send us some homemade ones, we wouldn't complain. But again, we usually make those at Christmas. It's a uh, Christmas cookie. Oh, trivia time. Number six. In Istanbul, you can ride A, an intercontinental undersea railway, B, a real life replica of the Batmobile, C, a carriage drawn by pigs. Or D, a supersonic commercial airplane. How about an underwater Batmobile pulled by <laughs> pigs? So all of the above? <laughs> I only went with three of them. Oh, um, flying pigs. Flying pigs. Oh, there you go. Supersonic flying pigs. Hmm. I'm going to go with the underwater railway. Underwater railway, huh? <clears throat> sure. And you would be correct. Wow. Uh, did you know? Well, apparently you did. <laughs> I guess, but <laughs> it kind of made sense. <laughs> that Istanbul straddles two continents. It's true. The 19-mile Bosphorus Strait divides Istanbul into its Asian and European sections. So the Merame Tunnel was built. While the idea of an underwater link isn't new, an Ottoman sultan suggested it more than a century ago, it wasn't until 2013 that it became a reality. Today, hopping from Asia to Europe while remaining in Istanbul takes just five minutes. Oops. Look how smart we're getting. Mm -hmm. Learning who, all the things. Who knew when you would tune into Snackerfice that you'd actually <clears throat> learn shit, right? Right. All right, so next up are more gummies from uh, Bebeto, uh -oh. who, who's a soccer player. What's he doing making gummies now? Maybe he bought a candy company. He could have. These are ice cream gunny, gummies. Gummies? Gummies. <laughs> <laughs> Blueberry, strawberry, and vanilla creaminess. So they're not sour, at least. Um, in summertime... Summertime got me feeling so good. I'm the ice cream man. Read Stop the thing, it smells good. By. Oh, <laughs> mama. In summertime, locals don't just buy ice cream. They... Swim in it. No. They duel for it. Oh, God. Uh -uh. <laughs> the entertaining <laughs> ice cream tradition involves customers trying to take... Done... Dunduma, Dunderma, Mastic Ice Cream. Oh, God, no. Well, vendors pull it away with slick. Oh, I've seen this. Yeah, slick sleight of hand. Mikey Chen. The Mikey, they did this to Mikey Chen on yeah. one of his videos. Like they flip it in and out of the cone. Like yeah. They, they let you take it and then you, you don't get it or something like that. The ice cream doesn't fall over. The sticky mastic keeps it stuck to the cone. Lucky for you, we'll just give you the strawberry, blueberry, and vanilla ice cream gummies, complete with caramel corns. No dueling required. When it comes to any hungry onlookers, though, you're on your own. Okay, so you said mastic, and I got worried. Right. Because that shit's gross. But these smell good and taste good. There's... I don't know if they're different flavors, but there's a... There should be. There should be blueberry, strawberry, and vanilla, I'm guessing. Well, I had vanilla, I think. And then this must be blueberry. I feel like with them all like together in the packaging, the flavors are kind of blending. Yeah, well, the blueberry tastes like blue raspberry, but only after you chew it for a minute. The vanilla was good. Now I'm going to have strawberry. The vanilla tasted fruity to me. Now 
They all start out tasting exactly the same. But after you chew it for a minute, it kicks in. Hmm. And I may have eaten the only strawberry. It didn't seem like there were very many in there with the strawberry. That's okay. I apologize. I didn't realize that. That's all good. But I like them. They're good. They're soft. S-A-W-F-T. Soft. Mm -hmm. Did we rate the... The dates. The, the date cookies. Mm. We'll go to the three on the date cookies. Yeah, I'd like to give them more, but they were really dry. And that the cookie part didn't taste very good, but the inside did. I'll go three as well on the uh, ice cream gummies. I would give those a four. I like them. Smiley face or meh? Meh. You want to give them a three? Yeah. I like them. I, obviously, I like them better than any of the other gummies we've had so far. So we're really going to like mess with our palates here because the next thing are honey mustard and onion rice cakes. All right, we're going to have some water. Uh, pop out. Honey mustard and onion corn and rice mini cakes. So I'm envisioning the flavor of like the uh, Snyder's pretzels, but like on a rice cake. Yeah, you know, like a Quaker's a Quaker rice snack cake. <clears throat> Whole grains and finger licking honey mustard. Here's an extra sticky fun fact. Every fall, Turkey produces the second most honey of any country on the planet, and yet barely any is exported. Why? Because domestic demand is sky high. We can't really blame Turks for keeping it. Not only do they have some truly amazing varieties, their Centauri honey harvested from a cave costs over $10,000 for two pounds. Wow. But they also know how to put it to delicious use. These rice cakes coated in sweet and spicy honey mustard seasoning will show you what all the buzz is about. They smell good. They're weirdly... Smoky? Wow. Those are actually really good. I like those. Like. Yeah. Well, honey mustard and onion. That's the, the taste I'm getting. Mm-hmm. Those aren't really up my alley. I don't really like mustard that much. I'm going to go four with those. I am going to go three. All right, Liz. The any last. More, any more trivia before we. Uh, sure. Final count. Oh, wait, was it? it your turn or my turn? Uh, my turn. Here we go. Carry your time. Um, per capita, Turkey is the world's largest consumer of A, coffee, B, persimmon, C, rice, or D, tea. I'm going to say persimmon. Um, you're actually incorrect. It's tea. Wow. I would think. Wow. Yeah. The UK might be famous for its tea ter terrific tendencies, and China might be tea's birth birthplace, but no one out sips the Turks. The average citizen savers seven pounds in a single year. That's three more than the Brits. What's especially surprising is that tea only became popular in Turkey in the last century as an inexpensive alternative to coffee. And yet today, 
No Turkish uh, house guest goes without being offered a cup. Hmm. You, you want to do the last question there? <clears throat> sure. Which of these facts about Raki, Turkey's national spirit, is not true? Um, it's consumed over a locksmith's table. Only monks are allowed to make it. During a toast, only the bottoms of glasses can touch. Rocky is conserved is is served with meze appetizers. And which one of these is not, not true. true? So three of them are true, and one of them is false. I'm gonna go with the locksmith's table. That just seems odd. Uh, no. The answer is B. While Rocky was originally created by 14th century Greek monks, they aren't the only ones who can make it today. But A, C, and D are true. Since deep feelings tend to be unlocked at the Rocky table, it earned the name locksmith's table. Uh. Appetites also tend to be unlocked and then satisfied by bite-sized appetizers called medze. And finally, never touch the top of someone's glass while toasting. It means you think you're better than them. Hmm. Serafense. Cheers. Well, this last snack, oh. I don't know that you can have it. Oh. This was like the most interesting package, this weird like feel like the weight of this oh my gosh you could knock somebody out with that yes i'll read the uh the thing <clears throat> orange and cocoa cookies top with citrus and cocoa sprinkles Woot! january and february excite are exciting months if you're a farmer on turkey's mediterranean coast that's because all the way from izmir to hefe it's time to collect the citrus harvest. Nearly 80% of the country's citrus fruits are grown on the Mediterranean coastline with its mild, moist winter that is perfect for oranges, lemons, and mandarins. So basically, each bite of these cocoa-sprinkled, orange-filled tartlets is like tasting Mediterranean sunshine. Close your eyes and take a bite. Feeling warm yet? So it's not worth it. You're so so. Um, not worth the risk. Yeah. Um, the the citrus feel like tastes like legit to me. So I don't like it's not like. It's probably really orange feel. Yeah. So I will skip that because <clears throat> I like breathing. But the cookie was kind of uh, tasted just like a like a sugar cookie, like a um, animal cracker cookie. I'd probably go maybe about a three. Meh or smiley? Yeah, I'd, I'd probably go I'd edging towards smiley, like a half smile. So I will not grade that one due to my. Uh, all right, so we got our we got our final grades here. You want a math? Well, what do you mean? Count them up, or no? Okay, so our highest scoring ones were the. Let's see here. Our highest well, my, scoring mine was ones, pretty easy as far as the top. Oh, the um, your top one was the the snowball, the coffee coffee coconut snowball. That was just decadent. I, I like that. And then I had a few more fours. Um, the right, the honey mustard and onion rice cakes. Um, the corn nuts. Yep. Is that what it was? The corn nuts. And then um, the vanilla. The vanilla thingy thing uh, that was interesting. And then uh, 
the right. um right out of the gate right out of the gate the uh, crackers <clears throat> i'd probably go the snowball um these crackers and then uh the tahini thing yeah i didn't have as many fours as you and i didn't have any fives um and then the only reason that snowball didn't get the five is the cream inside um I liked the the vegetable crackers. Those were a four. The tahini, vanilla tahini snack bar was a four. The snowball was a four. And the uh, ice cream gummies were a four. Hmm. Uh, of those, my favorite was the vanilla tahini bar. That was so unique. It was unique. It was delicious. I would buy that out of a vending machine. I would also get those crackers out of a vending machine. Like if I was sure. at work and I needed a snack, those would both be really great. Um, again, the snowball, it just, it had that hostess greasy cream filling that I'm not a big fan of. Um, and then the gummies out of the gummies that we had, the ice cream ones were good. I would, I, if somebody said, Hey, I got you these, I'd be like, yay. All right. Um, the least favorite. Let's go for the bad. Oh, the mastic. Yeah, the mastic. The mastic, that got a zero for me. It was terrible. It was like mop and glow or pine salt solidified into a chew. So we, I mean, we do have a couple people who will maybe uh, have try those out, maybe Jeremy at work and then uh, <laughs> Brother Sean and see what they uh, say about that one. So after that one, uh, my least favorite was the the chickpeas. Because I yeah. I hated those when I was a kid, and I hate them when I'm an adult. And I, you know me, I, I, there's very few foods that I'm like, no. Right. I, I I like olives. I like beets. I like um, all kinds of stuff that people are, you know, eh, on. But those roasted chickpeas are a hell no. I'm just looking at some of the other ones. The watermelons were kind of mad to me. The, the melon and lime chews, I thought, were kind of, eh, like, not very good. It, I think it was a good split between really good sure, and then, like, meh, and then two really big blech. Right. I mean, I'm, I'm encouraged by this, though, because there's lots of really good stuff in these. And um, that it's a different country, like, every month is intriguing. Right, so we're not going to get more Turkish snacks in the next box. Right. We might get things that are similar. Sure. But um, especially if you do other Baltic countries or if I know we have another one that's South Korea, right? Mm -hmm. We might get stuff in that that other Asian snack boxes might have similar things. Right. Um, because flavors are, you know, we're, we're, we live in New York, but we're pretty close to Canada. So there's mm -hmm. a big, you know, poutine love here. Sure. Um, so, you know, things bleed across borders. Yep. As they should. Oh, absolutely. Share your food. Actually, funny you mentioned the poutine. Did you hear the news? What, um, there's a local poutine food truck. Uh, Le Petit Poutine. Yes. They're actually opening up a brick and mortar location. Yay. Across from one of our favorite breweries. Three Heads Brewing. Really? Yes. I didn't realize that's where it was going. Is right it there on Atlantic Avenue. It's going to be right near one of our favorite Mexican takeout places, Little oh, Pueblo Girl. Yes. Wow. That's going to be tough. Yeah. And it's like, oh, we could go get a taco, or we could go stuff our face with the french fries, cheese curds, and gravy. Yeah. Mm. Well, and take, or take it over to the brewery and have it, well, have oh, some God. delicious beer. Delicious beer and poutine? Yeah. Imagine in heaven. Uh, I say so. So, did you want to do a second box, or are you... I'm good with going again. All right. We kind of got this... Uh, I think we're, we're, we'll are we be ready to do our trivia. And, and uh... All right. So, we decided... I mean, since we've done so much stuff from Asia, like, you know, countries, you know, with the J Japan box, we have won a Universal Yums from Japan. So we decided to put that off to the side for now. I thought it was South Korea. I think it was South Korea, right? Right. That's not But I meant, I meant like we've Asian. we've done so many Asian like boxes, like boxes from Japan. And looking at the stuff in the box, like just taking a quick preview of it, some of the stuff seemed common to stuff that we would get in a Japanese snack box. 
So we figured we would do this Universal Gums box, which is um, from Greece. Which, again, um, if you're talking geography, Turkey and Greece, historically not the best of friends. Um, mm -hmm. They like to fight. Uh, but, you know, like siblings, people who are close to one another tend to fight. Um, so geographically, they are close to one another. I didn't mention this, by the way. I forgot. I know there's one in the turkey box. Uh, but there's also, they put stickers and like graphic stickers like in each box. Let me see that. They're at the Golden Fleece Feast in Greece. That's neat. Yeah. <laughs> so just a little sticker there. So we have another uh, scorecard. Yeah. I'm really hoping that Greece is not a fan of Mastic. See a lot of well, you know what? There's one brand here right on the top of the box that is very prominent. So we'll see how this goes. You want to start with trivia? Uh sure. Hit me. Um what did the world's first vending machine dispense? Apples. Do you want your multiple oh, choices? Yes. <laughs> That's not on the list. Okay. A, holy water. Mm. B, mini philosophy books. <laughs> C, silverware. Or D, Pepsi. Holy water. You'd be correct. <laughs> Back in the first century AD, engineer Huron of Alexandria, or Heron? Huron. Huron of Alexandria the world's first vending machine for a divine purpose, dispensing holy water for temple goers. A coin inserted into the top would drop into a bar inside the vase, allowing holy water to flow. For locals at the time, these vending machines were a miracle, and for priests looking for an easier way to collect donations, they were a godsend. Let's see what they did there. Okay, so you see the first item that says start here. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> so, uh, again, this, could be interesting. Uh, this is something that I have made, uh, not a little bit, but I used to make pretty regularly. Uh, it's a labor intensive dish, I guess, uh, labor intensive recipe. Um, it's usually very worth it, it's a crowd pleaser. So the fact that uh, they're giving it to us mass-produced and pre-packaged, we're going to be a little critical. At least I am. I know you probably will, too, because you've had homemade. Oh. Almond baklava. Yes. So heavy. Greece is... Nutty take on the flaky classic. When exploring Greece, there are a few things you must do. See the Parthenon, soak up the sun on a white sand beach, and try baklava. Sorry, we didn't make the rules. We just happily abide by them. So why is baklava a must? Well, you'd be hard-pressed to find a single Greek celebration, be it a wedding, holiday dinner, or birthday party, without a platter of the syrupy centuries-old sweet front and center. Um, and it never gets boring, as there are tons of different varieties to choose from. There's Corcubinia, the itty-bitty bite-sized variety. Catalfi, the kind made with stringy shredded phyllo dough. And even Saragli, which is a baklava rolled up like a mini burrito. But to kick our Greek adventure into high gear, we brought you the one and only Original, flaky as ever, and filled with honeyed almonds. Be sure to savor it. Like seeing the Parthenon or sitting on a spectacular Greek beach, you'll never forget your first time tasting Greek baklava. So right off the bat, this packet is full of honey. To where it's like all over my hands. Okay. It, I opened it and it kind of blew out. Uh, so I'm trying to do this so that we don't end up with honey on the floor. You can lick the inside of the package. <laughs> I 
it's no longer crisp in any way that I'm seeing. It crunched though when you bit into it. Oh, it's dripping on your leg. <laughs> All right. It's not as good as homemade. The honey is mixed with too much sugar. It doesn't have a really strong honey flavor. But it is sweet. The phyllo is good. The filling is good. It's missing a few nuances that I'm accustomed to, like uh, the citrus flavor and a little bit of cinnamon. But for a mass-produced dessert, uh, it's good. Dearest love. Hey, honey. Bring me a wet paper towel or a damp paper towel. For my... Oh, look at you. It's already happening. You're so good. So that was good. Not as good as homemade. <coughs> but good. Or yes. He's, he's like, yes, I am saying this because if I say it was better, she might hurt me. No, no. It, <laughs> no, it... it what I thought, what I thought you were gonna say actually, was for like a prepackaged snack version of baklava. Mm -hmm. It was good. Is it gonna? Is it gonna like measure up to what you've made previously homemade? No, no. no. I mean, come on, that's not gonna happen. Because when it's fresh, it's usually got more crunch. This had some crunch, but it usually got more crunch. And like I said, the honey was muted, and and again, it just might be from because it's mass produced and prepackaged, right? Um, and it would be expensive if they made it with straight honey, mm -hmm. so there's probably corn syrup or sugar in it, right? Um, but tasty. Again, I wouldn't pick it as a snack out of the machine uh, on the go because it is messy. The package itself, you opened it and it was full of syrup. <laughs> Can you just imagine like you're on like a bus or like a subway or whatever <laughs> and you just you just end up spilling honey everywhere to like where like the person who sits in your seat next is just ends up sitting in like a pool of honey i mean <laughs> or you get it all over your clothes or you know your fingers are sticky like i mean if i was at the office and you know i was having lunch in the lunch room that you can wash your hands eat that right and then afterwards. wash my hands right afterwards. Sure. Right. Like you couldn't sit at your desk and eat it because then your keyboard would be all sticky. <laughs> so, uh, well, some people have that problem at home for other reasons. Ew. <laughs> ew. <laughs> gross. <laughs> Boys are gross. Um, um, so, uh, happy face, meh. Uh, definitely a happy face. Definitely. I'll go with a four on that one. Mm, that's a four. Yeah, I would agree. You know, it's not perfect, but it's close for what you expect it to be. I don't know who programmed these books, but like to jump to like the next thing. I have to put honey on my leg. Um, <laughs> it's so odd that we're going to go from uh, a honey almond baklava to roasted garlic bread chips. <laughs> Um, I'm I, game. What? I'm game. I I mean, I'm game, but it's just odd to go from something so sweet to something that's going to be kind of probably Savory. overwhelm like our flavor profile, you know? So this brand, when I opened this box up, it was quite prominent. There was no less than three packages that said up at the top that said toddy. Or totis. Or totis. But I mean, it's two T's, so I want with toddies. These are roasted garlic bread chips. Uh, finally, garlic bread you can snack on. You probably know that garlic is good for your body, but did you know it's good for your soul, too? 
let us explain. In Greece, there is a, a widespread belief that bad luck can be caused simply by receiving a malicious glare. The evil Lo eye. Yep. Locals aptly call this phenomenon evil eye or Mahdi. How do they protect themselves? With a special evil eye neutralizing amulet or garlic. Folks keep garlic cloves in their pockets or handbags and hang them above entryways in their homes and businesses. We prefer a slightly tastier tactic, munching on these extra crunchy bread chips coated in pungent garlic seasoning. They're delicious. <laughs> Is that? Mm. Is that why I haven't had one yet? Uh huh. Oh, you want some? <laughs> Those are perfect. Those are a five. I could eat those every day. Little tiny slices of crunchy bread, not crouton crunchy. They're not like rip the roof of your mouth apart crunchy. They're just perfectly like toasted Italian bread. They did a nice job with these, really. The seasoning is good. The flavor of the bread itself is mm -hmm. good. It it tastes like yeasty Italian bread. Like they cut like a small little tiny loaf of bread up into these chips. I I mean Yeah, I mean these are really good. <laughs> I don't think I held any up to the camera. Not that there's any washers right now, but it almost looks like a bagel, but that's like the inside of bread where the yeast makes an air pocket. I, I would say I would say you're right. I would say a five. Mm. I'll write it down in a minute. <laughs> I can't wait for you to read the next trivia question. Mm. Yum. That's a star. Oh. <clears throat> Ancient Greeks used blank. As bandages. A. Mastic gum. <laughs> <laughs> B. Snail slime. D. Papyrus. Or I'm sorry. C. Papyrus. D. Spider webs. So the ancient Greeks used mastic gum, snail slime, papyrus, or spider webs as bandages. I'm going to go with papyrus. Nope. Spider webs. And this is actually something that um, scientists are researching in today, uh, today's times, to use spider silk uh, for bandages um, because it doesn't stick to the wound. Oh. It, it sticks to itself. Obviously, they have to be cleaned and purified, but spider silk uh, is still a, a choice. So the answer is D. Next time you see a spider web, don't throw it away. Gather it up. Doctors in ancient Greece treated wounds with balled up spider webs, believing they had natural antifungal and antiseptic properties. Modern science has revealed that this wasn't a crazy idea. Spider webs are rich in vitamin K, which helps promote clotting. So next time you see a spider, don't say eek. Say thank you. It's the least you can do. I am unlikely to start thanking house spiders. I'm not surprised. Um, because our house spiders don't make webs; they just hang out in the corners and look evil. So, again, bouncing back and forth between sweet and savory. Our next snack are the peanut and hazelnut puffs by the same company, Totus, Toties, Toties. However, you say that. I feel like, um, do you remember when we did the we, we did the curated mystery box out of the uh, Oktoberfest snacks from Aldi? And everything was made by du Deutsche Kuchen? Deutsche Coach. Hmm. 
No, that's not where I was going, though. Mm -hmm. um, do you remember that there were peanut puffs? Yes. Uh, that were not all good. the put together. What? They weren't good. But I'm wondering if these are going to be similar, but maybe better. Hopefully. Uh, the ones that we had uh, out of the Aldi's curated snack box was that the peanut puffs, they weren't sweet. They were savory. There was very, there was little to no sugar in them. So they were more like eating a peanut that had been turned into a puff instead of peanut butter that it had been turned into a puff. But anyway, roasted peanut or hazelnut, why not both? What if these nut puffs had healing powers? According to Dioscorides, a famous Greek physician and author of a millennia-spanning medical journal, they do. For a nasty cough, he prescribed a mixture of hazelnut and honey. For colds, cooked hazelnut and pepper. He even created a cure for baldness by smearing a paste of charred hazelnut and animal fat on a receding hairline. These puffs might not do anything for your luscious locks or lack thereof, but with an addictive crunch, they're our go-to remedy for a rumbly tummy. We're big. We're big. No disappointing. I feel like they're very similar to the Dutch coach ones from uh, mm -hmm. from all the. They're not sweet. There's no sugar in them at all. None. They're salty, so they're mm -hmm. a savory snack. And our palates are used to peanuts as sweets. And hazelnut as sweets. So for the peanut and hazelnut to be savory, eh, nope. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're not spit out, but they're meh. There are two. I was mm -hmm. going to go three. You want to do the next trivia? Uh, sure. When touring ancient historical sites, it's illegal to A, fly a drone, B, wear high heels, C, use selfie sticks, or D, laugh out loud. Um, I'm going to say, what was the first one? Fly a drone. I'm going to say fly a drone. Um... You're incorrect. What is it? Uh, you can't wear high heels at ancient Greek historical sites like the Acropolis because you could potentially wound the monuments. Sharps sold shoes were, were adding to the wear and tear of national treasures, so authorities banned them in 2009. Many of these historical sites are made of notoriously slippery marble or stone so sneakers will also help to prevent any embarrassing slips you don't want to damage the parthenon or your pride mm, good to know mm -hmm. wear sneakers to the parthenon yep so we're going to get into the yum bag this uh -oh. month's yum bag no mastic no mastic no mastic we have almond milk toffees no hopefully not made with mastic please yeah, if you want to. The soft, rich, and creamy treat from Athens. There's a reason the ancient Romans called almonds nut rica, Greek nuts. If Greeks aren't plucking almonds straight from the tree as a snack, they're savoring them at any other meal of the day. Maybe it's during a breakfast of lucumades, which are donut balls topped with round almonds, an afternoon appetizer of scordalia, creamy almond and garlic dip, or a sweet dessert of baklava, like the one in our box. Even candies get the almond treatment, so feel free to eat these chewy yums any time of day. Really, 
you'd only be immersing yourself deeper in the local culture. So it's not mastic, it's almond. Hopefully not masking mastic. Oh no, it's the color of mastic. Mm. Okay, it smells good though. You know what it reminds me of? You know, like those, um, they have, like, I think Tootsie, the Tootsie Roll company puts them out. Like the fruit mm -hmm. chews with the, the white in the middle. Mm -hmm. That is almost like a cream. It yeah. reminds me of those in a way. The vanilla flavored ones. Yeah. But this is good, though. Yeah, it's good. It tastes like, like you said, a cross between a vanilla Tootsie Roll and almond paste. Just a little tiny square of almond paste. Not as strong. A candy version of almond paste. So, I would, room. I'd give that a four all day. Yeah, I agree. Uh, somebody said, "Would you like one?" I would say, "Sure." I mean, I wouldn't turn it down. I imagine those probably come in a big, you know, bag, bag. like a pound or so bag of those. I I <clears throat> get those at the store. Have them in a car those, like, and a, in a dish on a trip. Yeah. What's next? Or is it time for me to read you a, a trivia question? Sure. Which of the following is said to ward off evil in Greece? A, Greek salad. B, crows. C, salt. Or D, the color orange. Do they call Greek salads Greek salads in Greece, or do they just call it salad? Yeah, no, just call them salads. I'm so left. Um, I'm going to go with, um, I'm going to go with salt. You would be right. Um, science has proven that salt has many health benefits. And according to Greek folklore, it can also be sprinkled in new homes to chase away any evil energies or get rid of un an unwanted guest. So, or like an unwanted guest, like a ghost or like, like. an in-law that stayed too long. <laughs> Just Maybe. throw salt at them. <laughs> and they take the hint. Um, so next time you want someone to leave your house, sprinkle a little salt behind them. Just be sure to be covert. If they see you, they might be a little salty. Wah, wah, wah. But that's not really, I mean, that's kind of, uh, that's kind of almost a universal thing. Um, you know, salt behind your shoulder. Uh, all of the normal TV shows and stuff, salt circles, salt around doorsteps to protect, protect from evil entities, blah, blah, blah. So whatever your superstition or beliefs are, I think the salt thing is kind of a... You're, you're like the Bubba Gump of salt knowledge. I am. I, 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 I mean, it's like a fraud strip. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we get to the next uh, snack? Oh, I was just going to keep talking about salt. <laughs> I know. That's why it's like... You know, like a <clears throat> A tour of Greece. Next snack is paprika and tomato potato chips. Say that three times fast. Garden fresh tomato meets smoky paprika. You have one person to thank for these chips. Toddy. Nope. <laughs> Giannis... Cappadostrius, Cappadistrius, sorry, Greece's first prime minister, convinced that the potato was the key to boosting the economy, he started giving them away for free in 1829. When the public didn't see the appeal, appeal, he hatched a new plan. He had armed guards protect the next potato shipment as it arrived in Nephilim. Locals believing the potatoes to be valuable started stealing them. And before long, the potatoes spread countrywide. 
ingenious, right? Almost as ingenious as, say, pairing potato chips with tomato and smoky Greek paprika. So they're chips. So we've had one good and one bad from this company. Not bad, but just kind of mad. Kind of been. Ooh. It's not smoky. Did you see it? No, I just opened it. Oh, they do smell nice. Mmm. Salty, but good. Mmm. Hotties. Those are yum. Those have got some good flavor to them. Something this smoky without bacon in it is impressive. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. That smoked paprika. Yum. Good job. Not as good as the uh, the garlic bread chips, but a solid four. I'd go with four as well. All right, you want to do the next trivia? Certainly. A Greek vase from 440 BC shows the earliest depiction of A, a yo-yo, B, a whale, C, a man swimming, or D, a burrito. A yo-yo. Wow, you're correct. <laughs> yes, the toy. The very first yo-yo depiction featuring a boy playing with the timeless toy was found on a vase from the 5th century BC. Made of wood, metal, or clay, the ancient Greek yo-yo may have served as more than just entertainment. Some believe it was created as an offering to the gods or as a coming-of-age ritual for boys. Nothing says adulthood like <laughs> sick yo-yo tricks. <laughs> I'd like to think it's actually a little boy who was a time traveler from oh. like the 1950s when somebody saw him and like we would snap a picture. Somebody painted it real fast on the, on the vase. Well, you know who has said that he's a time traveler. Marty McFly? No. Um, of In our podcast network, uh, Jim has stated that he's a time traveler. So, so maybe he went back to 5th century BC um, Greece, Greece and, with a yo -yo. and showed off with his uh, whammo yo-yo. Sick yo-yo skills. All right. So this might be a very interesting treat. <laughs> I'm read it. I'll read it. Oh no. This is a grape moss mustu colora cookie. Folks don't folks. Folks don't often use the word musty to describe good things, usually. Basements or good things. Usually basements or socks. But we found the exception. The soft Cinnamony cookies are meant to be musty. They're made with literal grape must, a thick mixture made up of the freshly pressed juice, skins, seeds, and stems of the grape, usually prepared as the first step of winemaking. Fortunately, the must made in the northern Greek city of Kikis doesn't get turned into wine. It's used to make this traditional Musta Colora cookie an absolute must for any visit to Greece. Mm -hmm. That's why I was having trouble reading that. How is it? Okay. 
I'll tell you what this is like. As soon as I can stop chewing. <laughs> and I think you'll agree. Have you ever gone to like a convenience store and gotten the box of like the plain donuts? Mm. Enemas? Mm hmm. Or donuts. This reminds me the, uh, of those. How can something be soft and dry? <laughs> if you want a soft and dry donut like cookie, have we got a cookie for you? It's made with grape moss. So that might make you think that it's going to taste grapey. Or musty. Or musty. No, it's actually going to taste like a little bit like cinnamon, but otherwise just doughy. Here it is. The Great Moss Muscalora Cookie. It tastes like a store-bought cinnamon donut. Get it today. Or like an oatmeal raisin cookie that's been turned into a donut. Are you stuck? You're supposed to pause for the um, Get it today. Sorry. Um, that's a... It's not awful. It's just very thick. Two. Two. Yeah, I would never buy it. So... How are we doing on the questions? How many do we got left? <clears throat> got three questions left. Let's do one more snack and then we'll do a question. How about okay, that? sounds good. You need to read it? Sure. Our next snack is ooh, drizzled milk chocolate wafer. Grease's version of a better Kit Kat. Wow. The gauntlet has been thrown. If you've learned anything from watching Willing, Willing Snackerfice over these 19 episodes, Mike likes his Kit Kats. Obsessed with wafers? Get oh. excited! Greece is where wafers were invented. Back in 146 BC, Athenians cooked them by pouring batter between two hot plates like an ancient waffle iron. And topping the finished wafers, called oblios, with herbs and cheese. I don't know. You, you know, like if, I was going to say, like, if anybody made one like that, it would be the uh, Japanese right. folks because they'll make a Kit Kat out of anything. anything. And God knows we've had some of them. The um, cheesecake one. Actually, you know, I, oh, those maple ones, too. Oh, those oh. were good. Uh, I was going to say that was like one of the redeeming qualities of the Tokyo Treat uh, Mystery Box. If you like Kit Kats, you get at least one bag. One full bag. One full bag of Kit Kats every month. Mm -hmm. And some of the flavors are just amazing except the matcha 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 uh so uh, to see how far greek wafers have come since then just take a bite of this yum with four crispy wafers slathered in cocoa cream then coated in rich chocolate and then drizzled with even more chocolate you're basically tasting two thousand years of innovation <laughs> I was going to say, 2,000-year-old chocolate. 2,000 years of innovation, and boy, is it good. So they've thrown down the challenge that it is better than a Kit Kat. I am not going to taint your experience. You're doing like the uh, Joe Bastianich. Am I? Yeah. I take that as a uh, compliment. Considering his mother is one of my idols. That's pretty damn good. It's lighter than a Kit Kat. The chocolate's good. The chocolate is better quality than an American Kit Kat. Yeah, nice, very, very nice milk chocolate. A little, <laughs> a, like nice and airy. Mm -hmm. So it. yeah, it's oh. lighter than a Kit Kat. Mm. Uh, you can have the rest. Um, and you don't have to tell me twice. <laughs> uh, so it's good. I, I would say it's up there with the Canadian Kit Kat or the 
the uh, UK Kit Kat. It was a little jab. I like that the interior is filled with more of an airy cream instead of a thick chocolate. So it's not as cloying. Kind of almost sweet. like um arrow bar in a way. Yeah, it was really good. Um, five. Yeah, I mean, I. it's not my favorite of the box, but it's, I can't find so fault far, with that's, it. That's up there, the bagel. <laughs> the bagel chips the, are pretty uh, good yeah. too. They're not bagels, they're like bread chips. Or bread chips, rather. Mm, I like the trivia to break it up just yeah. a little bit, you know? How did ancient Greeks propose marriage? A, jumping over hot coals. B, reciting a line from Homer's epics. C, waving an olive branch. Or D, throwing an apple. Could you imagine like you were just trying to avoid some hot coals and you accidentally jumped over them and then like someone thought that you were proposing marriage to them? You're like, oh, shit. I'm going to go with the olive branch. You would be wrong. The is answer the is how you like them apples. Oh, you throw an apple? To propose, a Greek man would throw an apple at his sweetheart. And if she caught it, it meant she accepted it. Accepted. Oh, damn. Believe it or not, the custom's origin dates back to a myth in which Eris, the goddess of discord, throws an apple and starts a fight at a wedding, which eventually escalates into the Trojan War. And yet somehow the apple became a symbol of female beauty and love. So here's my question. I mean, what happens if she was just really bad at catching? She's never going to get married. She better practice. What if she didn't want to accept his proposal? She just has to put her hands down and take it in the face. Hopefully he would hopefully a, a suitor would just chuck it at your head. Spike it. Spike it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean run, duck. <laughs> He's got like men sneaking up on women and, and like chucking apples at them. Is that like the um like the courting thing on like uh, the batch the the bachelorette, like all the guys will throw apples at her, it's like in a Greek one, and she'll decide which ones to catch. Yeah, maybe. Oh, have yeah, to that. check that out. Not really. No. Okay. So if I threw an apple, or I guess it doesn't work for the women to throw it at the guy. Would you throw an apple? Absolutely. To me. <laughs> <laughs> I might not catch it. I'm not very good at that part. <laughs> I would try. I would try very hard to catch it. <laughs> what snack do we have next, Tom? Huh? Uh, I have to say, though, my mouth is a little confused because I keep tasting the smoke from the paprika chips and chocolate at the same time. <laughs> huh. uh, our next one is a pomegranate jelly candy. Now, I'm probably going to like these, but I don't think you like pomegranates because they're a little tart. Tart and sweet and exceptionally chewy, pomegranate is dangerous, at least in Greek mythology. As the story goes, Hades, the god of the dead, trapped Persephone, goddess of vegetation, in the underworld, leaving Greece with no crops. Hades eventually agreed to release her, but first he fed her some pomegranates. Nice, right? Nope. Food was forbidden in the underworld, so eating the pomegranate meant Persephone had to stay there for a portion of every year. That's how the Greeks explain the seasons. Fortunately for you, modern Greeks actually consider pomegranate to be good luck, as well as a must-have for weddings and New Year's Eve parties. That means you can go ahead and enjoy this juicy pomegranate jelly, no strings attached. It's very jelly. Don't be jelly. Don't be jelly. Mm. Oh, all right. Very flavorful for that kind of candy. The uh, sugar crusted. Almost like chuckles. Yeah. But better flavor than chuckles. That's all right. Yeah. I'd go maybe like a three. Yeah, like I wouldn't buy them. But if somebody offered one, I wouldn't be turning it down. 
And the home stretch here. Mm -hmm. uh, what did the Oracle Adelphi do to make prophecies? A, play a song with Apollo's lyre. B, eat 15 pomegranate seeds. C, breathe fumes from the ground. Or D, put on ointment made from bees. Hmm, I'm going to say the fumes. Wow, you are correct. The Oracle Delphi, known for her future seeing insights, was sought after by peasants and rulers alike for her supernatural abilities. So how did she make her prophecies? One theory is that the Oracle sat above a, a schism in the earth and breathed in any escaping fumes, which helped produce visions. Sounds wild, but it might be true. 21st century geologists found two faults below the temple, plus evidence of hallucinogenic gases rising from a nearby spring. And I can add further trivia knowledge to that, is that uh, the Oracle of Delphi was a, a job, not a person. And it was chosen from one of the virgins of Athena's temple. Hmm. And every Oracle was named Pythia. When you became the Oracle, your name became Pythia. Be careful not to breathe. Um, if you went, if the oracle happened to go to Turkey and you breathe out of those vents there, because you end, end up breathing fire. Yeah. So what's next? Oh, so this one I'm surprised is in this box and not the last box. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is prickly pear. Turkish delight. I'm going to show the box. Just trying to open the box. I have some cellophane. Ah. Greek lakumi inspired by a cactus fruit. We know what you're thinking. Why is there Turkish delight in the Greek box? Well, both countries were once part of the Ottoman Empire, so they have a lot of cuisine in common. Turkish light, delight, or lakumi, as it's known in Greece, is the perfect example. After spreading from Istanbul to Greece in the early 19th century, locals quickly made it their own. Take this yum. It tastes just like the fruit of the prickly pear cactus, a staple of the Aegean islands. Because prickly pear is usually covered in spines, these lakumi jellies are the safest and most delicious way to taste this iconic Greek flavor. I have never had Turkish Delight flavored anything. I've never I've had been Turkish spending delight. the last minute while you were reading there trying to figure out how to open this box up. So I, I think, think I finally figured it out. Oh, they're messy. A Turkish Delight is covered in the powdered sugar, powdered sugar or cornstarch so that it doesn't stick. Oh, I see. Okay. So I'm going to just do this. Little gift box. I'm getting powder on there. Not that. Oh, is that all right? I don't think I did. Okay. And then the pieces are like this and covered in powdered sugar. I think I picked up a double. And it doesn't taste like anything except sugar. Like the inside of a jelly bean. That's like underwhelming. I don't get it. I had hopes. I like the texture. It just doesn't taste like anything. It just tastes sweet. I was hoping for a punch of flavor. Perfectly paired delight. I'm not getting it. Artificially delight. flavored. Yeah. They couldn't even get that part right. I'm going to give it a two. One. Really? Yeah. I didn't. They're just horrible. They're not. There's nothing to it. They're sweet. I mean, they're, they don't taste gross. I. 
I mean, I just don't like them because they're just pointless. It's pointless. Last last trivia question. It is Greek law that all citizens a eat olive oil every day, b vote in elections, c go to church, d learn to drive mopeds. Yeah, wrong country. Um, I'd say I go to church. You would be wrong. B, would you expect anything less from the birth birthplace of democracy? The government of modern Greece takes democracy just as seriously as its ancestors. Every citizen above the age of 17 is required by law to vote through enforcement, or, or, or though enforcement is lax. That's not... The only way Greece encourages voting, elections take place on a Sunday, and all students get a four-day weekend. We can definitely get behind that. That's cool. Yeah. All right. So we got the final snack in this thing. And the thing about it is, is this packaging might look a little familiar. It's the same packaging as the uh, baklava. Same, same company. company. Uh, these are almond shortbreads. And by packaging standards, this is pretty elaborate. Kind of slick. I it have high, high hopes. End. It looks high end. Yeah. You want me to read or I you... can do it. Almond Corobides cookies. Greece's famously cozy Christmas time treat. If you received the turkey box in May then you might think you're seeing double. But there's a subtle difference between Turkish kurabiye and these Greek kurabides, almond biscuits. Their shape, according to legend, when Ottoman Turks occupied Greece in the middle of the 15th century, kurabides cookies had to be baked in a crescent shape in homage to the Turkish flag. So you could say that digging into these round curabides is a delicious way of celebrating Greece's independence since 1821. Coincidentally, they're also Greece's favorite way of celebrating Christmas. What cookies were they referring to in the Turkish box? Kurabiye, K-U-R-A-B-I-Y-E. I mean, I just went through them all, and I'm not sure. Well, yeah, I... It wasn't a... Yeah. We got lied to. <laughs> I don't know. Well, if you thought the Turkish delights were dangerous, Liz... Oh, the powdered sugar. Um, this is going to be difficult. Um, this is this is going to be... This is going to be difficult. Um, you have a degree of difficulty here to open this and not dump. Powdered sugar all over creation. Yeah. I have a, I have a kind of a, an opening. Uh, Maybe this is part of like the Christmas trick. Oh no! Sugar everywhere. <laughs> yeah, don't take the tray because there's sugar all underneath. Much like the honey that was all underneath the uh, baklava, the sugar is all underneath the tray of these cookies. Is that just one cookie? Yeah. Good. You want to just. I don't think it could break it. It'll just be crumbles. There you go. Mm. 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 I have sugar all in my mouth. 
you're going to find these familiar in case. Oh, yeah. Your mom makes these. Yeah. Mike's mom makes these at Christmas time. Only she calls them Russian tea cakes. Right. But, and I think she uses walnuts instead of almonds. But they are shortbread cookies. They're delicious. They're very crumbly and dry. And they've got ground up pieces of nuts in them. I'm put that in the box. Not all over the place. Um, they're good. They're pretty close to what your mom makes. Only your mom makes them much smaller. They're not like meat They're little size. tiny rounds. like Shortbread. Yeah. Yeah. I like your mouth better. Those are good though. Yeah. Like for like a packaged one. Oh yeah. Again, that's not like something you would eat on like a bus or. No, someplace. it would just be everywhere. Uh, but if your mom didn't want to make Christmas cookies and just bought a package of those and put those out on a plate, I would never question it. Who the fuck would know? Um, I give those a four. A four, yeah. Those are good. Those are good. They're very Christmassy uh, feeling with all the sugar. And um, for like pre packaged like snacks, this candyless brand is pretty good. So we've got our our final ratings. Our huh? final ratings. I mean, unquestionably, I mean, there's two. There's two that are right up there for me: the uh, bread chips and the um, the Kit Kat. The Kit Kat. Uh, the the, the wanna be Kit Kat. The Kit Kat better than a Kit Kat. Yeah, those two are. Those two are right up at the top for me. Yeah. I mean, if you could have like one savory favorite and one sweet favorite, those would be it. But if I had to pick one, it would be the garlic bread yeah. chips. Then honorable mentions were the baklava. Baklava was good. And by the same brand, the almond shortbread cookies. Yeah. And then the... Um, Don't forget those tomato and paprika the chips. The tomato paprika smoky chips. And then uh, the... The, the uh, toffee chew. The vanilla. The yeah, the vanilla almond paste toffee chew. Yeah. All honorable mentions. Uh, the most disappointing to me was the um, Turkish delight. Yeah. For me, it was the Turkish delight, and then the uh, puffs. No. For me, the puffs. The great moss cookie. That was up there with being down there. Uh, I like the great moss cookie better than the puffs. But that's not saying much. Yeah. But there were two really good, I mean, yeah. honestly, four really good things in this box. Yeah. Both of the Candyless, Candyless uh, items, the baklava and the almond shortbread cookies, the um, Toadies uh, garlic chips, garlic bread chips, and the uh, Kit Kat Refine. Right. Now, here's the thing I'll say about this box and and you know it, the two boxes we did tonight they were very good very enjoyable um the thing i've seen a lot of people get these is they get them for like you know their family or whatever and they just try the snacks around the table or whatever obviously we've taken it to like a different kind of thing we wanted to do like a podcasty kind of video podcast show about it mm -hmm. but the thing is, is if you noticed everything that we had you had at least four of each. That way, mm -hmm. if you had like a family of four, you had more people that wanted to try this stuff. You had plenty for everybody to do. So, like if we had if we had some of our regulars on this show, mm -hmm. we have enough to share amongst everybody. There were and a few things very, that weren't the Kit Kat. There was only one, and the baklava. There was only one. Um, that's true. That's true. But the majority um, of everything else had yeah. multiple. Well, like the almond shortbread, the chews, the bagel chips. Everything was multiples. You're right. The Well, the Kit Kat, you could have separated out. It was soft. I probably would have put it in the fridge. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if it wasn't just the two of us. But, yeah, the baklava would have been really difficult to do that with. Yeah, because that wasn't going to cut. That would no. have just fallen apart. But everything else was kind of like that. Now, the reason why I mention that is, is because, like, some of the items in, like, the Tokyo Treat where... <laughs> Like those little tiny marshmallow things. You get one tiny marshmallow. Yeah, yeah. And those are just kind of like, eh, you, you can't really separate those out that well. Um, but I'm I'm really digging these boxes so far. Mm -hmm. Some of this stuff has been phenomenal. And 
I'm really excited. The only disappointing thing is about Universal Yums is that they don't offer like a, a drink beverage. option. Yeah. Because I love the drink option on these just to experience like a soda or a juice, a juice or a tea or whatever from around the world. Mm -hmm. um, granted, through some of the boxes that we've had that had drink options, I felt like we got a few repeats. There was a lot of like Pepsis. Yeah. Um, that were like seasonal Pepsis yeah. from Japan or China. Yeah. Um, but we can always we can always maybe seek out beverages from those countries mm -hmm. at like some of the uh, international grocery stores around town. Well, I found that you know I was I was very ambivalent about trying like some of those milk ones or yogurt ones. Yeah. Um, but after trying them, they're pretty delicious. And there's the uh, Asian food market um, in Henrietta here that I would definitely probably try some of their their beverages, like the milkis and the yeah. um, and some of that well, stuff. And even I mean they're that there's the international grocery store that may actually have stuff like beverages from Greece or Turkey or whatever mm -hmm. country we get next. Well, I know Turkey, uh, one of the things they have is Uzon, and I know you probably would absolutely hate that. I'd still try it. It's, and is that flavored? I'd still try it. I mean, um, that's the thing about willing sacrifice. Is, you have to try it. And you have to be willing. Yeah. So uh, looking at our two scoreboards, uh, it was it's hard to say which box was better, oh, like, Turkey or Greece. Um, um, but I'm going to say Greece was better. I enjoy Greece better. I mean, Turkey had a few shining moments, like the uh, the sesame vanilla sesame bar and the uh, coffee snowball. Right. Um, but there were more consistent delicious items in the greek box yeah and that's a that's the tough thing is is that we're actually picking the second box as our favorite and by the time you're getting through what like 23 snacks you're pretty much at like your end point we're snacked out yeah yeah because i mean that's a lot of stuff to try mm -hmm. and i mean you know this is two hours uh just snacking granted we haven't been you know filling up on everything we have no. there's lots of leftovers yep. um a, a few that are le le lesser leftover than others or that are gone because they were one-offs right. um yep but my hands still smell like those smoky chips they're like permeating the house they're very pungent but yeah i, I think we're ready to close this giant sized mm -hmm. episode yeah. out um, we hope you all enjoyed watching it. If you haven't watched it, you know, throw some comments up there on, on the Facebook page or even on the YouTube, um, and let us, and let us know if you enjoyed it. And if you're willing to sacrifice with us, please let us know because we're, we're always open to having people, um, come in with us. And I even, we even have the technology that if you're from afar, you can join with us. We, we can make you from an ear. Yes. Um, and then uh, stay tuned for some uh, future episodes. We do have another Universal Yums box coming up soon. South Korea. Uh, and I promise, I, I promise, I just haven't gotten around to it. We have ramen coming. He's been pimping the ramen terry for months now. I just, I've been busy. It's summer. Who wants hot soup in summer? Right. right. Probably so, people who have air conditioning. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, not a bad thing that we haven't done it yet, but maybe come September or so, maybe we'll get to it. Mm -hmm. Although September is pretty busy. Maybe October. I'm pushing it far out. Far I don't know. We could do it in August. Okay, we'll see. We'll, we'll see. take a look at the uh, the temperatures and pick a night when it's in the low 60s. And, <laughs> and everybody needs to have their sodium and intake. Everybody needs to have their sodium intake. And somebody's pulling into our driveway. As we're both very distracted by... <laughs> Watching, They're just turning around. Turning around. It was, it like, was very weird. It was a like, vehicle we did not recognize. <laughs> we're like, who that? Um, and we're literally just sitting. We have this big, huge bay window opposite us. And we're just sitting there watching somebody pull into our driveway. It's like we're both just sitting on the couch, like staring straight ahead. <laughs> They're probably like, if they could even, I, I, I know people like, unless you're really, as you're walking up close, you can't really see into the windows. But if, if they could see us, they're probably just like, what the? What were those people doing? Yeah. 
Anywho, um, yeah, uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, stay tuned uh, to this channel for future episodes. And uh, because we didn't do it in the beginning, I'm Liz. And I'm Mike. And if you're willing to sacrifice with us, please just let us know. And we'll be more than happy to have you. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, have so a good night, all. Have a great night. We'll see you later. <laughs>